Oh, you gits, listen up. I'm here to tell you how to leave the orcs. I'm the biggest in the room right now, so I is the boss. That leads me right to the first slide. Get crumping. We all know that the biggest orc is the boss, but sometimes we don't know who's the biggest. So then you need to fight to find out. Once you find out, then you know whose is the biggest and you can get back to the wall. So I'm going to jump in here from time to time and translate Raka's presentation into something that humans can understand. This first part may require the greatest deviation from the original presentation. Orcs are actually a really highly hierarchical species. They very much have leaders and followers, and everyone is fairly clear on their position within their hierarchy. That hierarchy comes entirely from size. If you are bigger, then you are in charge. And when you fight, you get bigger. So the longer you're around and the more fights you get into, the bigger you are and the more in charge you are. Their society revol revolves around this understanding of that. And inherently, the ideas that come from the people in charge must be right. And that's the way their society runs. If you're not sure about who's in charge, then you have a fight and the winner is the bigger one. And they also get bigger, so it's self-reinforcing. In human organizations, we probably don't want to be having constant fights in the hallways to determine who's in charge. We're much closer to the same size as each other. It's much more confusing. That being said, we do need our leadership organizations to be capable of fighting over the quality of different ideas. You want your senior leadership group to be able to fight with each other about, again, ideas, to make sure that you are following the right path, to look at different options, and to come together on some sort of consensus. I've worked with leadership groups in the past that did not fight, that had what I've called a brittle politeness, where there isn't necessarily agreement so much as compliance. And rather than fight over ideas, certain people in the room just win those fights inherently, and that's the end of it. And that can work if what comes out of the room is alignment. If we go into a room and a bunch of ideas enter and one leaves, then that's okay to some degree regardless of how that alignment came about. But if you have brittle politeness, what usually actually happens is you have fake alignment. So the person who wins all the fights says the thing that they want to happen and everyone sort of nods along and then you leave the room and then everyone does whatever they want and undercut that idea. And that's what you cannot have. So ideally in that situation, what should be happening is you all go in to the room, you fight as loudly and as roughly as you need to, to come to some form of actual alignment so that when you leave the room, you can all work together towards that final goal. It isn't necessary that you actually agree with the final decision as long as you can be aligned on the outcoming direction. What you can't allow to happen is continued dissension to persist after you've come to a conclusion. In my experience, if you have a leadership team that cannot fight with itself to resolve conflict, then you have a leadership team that is building up this backlog of resentment and, frankly, unmade decisions. Next, we all know red is faster. Green is the orcs. Yellow goes boom. Blue is for the lucky gits. Black is hard like the goths. Er, I thought I had six colors on this slide. Anyways, we all knows this. This keeps us all aligned. The stupid umis, they have to talk about this stuff. We just knows. So, a little bit of background on orcs. There's this misunderstanding with a lot of people that orcs technology is all run by their psychic powers. That they can pick up a rock and if they think it's a grenade hard enough, then when they throw it, it'll explode. And that's not exactly right. But they do have a color-coded understanding of technology. Red things go faster, for example. But when you kind of dig into that, it's actually a somewhat self-fulfilling prophecy. If a boss decides he wants his truck to go faster, he paints it red. Now it's a fast truck. And of course, now when the mech boy works on that truck, 
He's going to soup it up to make it even faster. And now it's a fast red truck. And he's going to soup it up to make it even faster. And it's even a faster red truck. So over time, that red jalopy, which was just a fast, slow thing, becomes an actual fast thing. As the color itself causes behaviors which cause things to get the way they appear to be. And that works with us as well. If we are leading a group that has a common understanding about the way things work, this is going to be somewhat self-reinforcing. If you decide that your fantasy game with kobolds, that kobolds are going to be sneaky, then what's going to happen is as you evaluate combats with kobolds, you're going to get bugs saying they're not sneaky enough, and then you're going to create abilities that allow them to be more sneaky. And over time, that common understanding is going to cause things to happen. So it actually is very useful for us to have these common understandings of things that are true about our project, that our save games are going to be super fast or our load times are going to be long. Even if they're negative things, having this common understanding causes an inherent alignment behind the project. And the more times that we can make our team pull in the same direction automatically, the better off we are because that's going to allow us to lead with a much lighter touch. If we are aligned, then we don't need leadership because we're just going in the same direction automatically. So having these common understandings, this color coding of the way things are supposed to be can help us a lot in terms of maintaining that alignment. Y'all bring your choppers? Course you did. Every orc can swing the chopper. Even odd boys like the Max and the weird boys can swing the choppers. Orcs gonna fight. Your plan is gonna take the chopping, so tells the lads the plan. Then, even if some odd boy needs to do some chopping, he can, because he knows what to do. If they don't know the plan, how do they know what needs chopping? So two things here. One, I am a strong believer in having people be able to do multiple things, if at all possible. I've seen an over-specialization in the video game industry, and I think it's caused a lot of problems because the more people that you need to touch a solution, the slower it's going to go, the more room there is for misunderstandings and for things to go off the rails. So the more people can do a broader collection of things, the better. That's not to say you shouldn't have specialists, but what it means is that ideally, even your specialists can do a broader range of things, if at all possible. But in order for that to happen, everyone needs to understand where you're going. Because if that specialist doesn't understand the overarching goals, if all they understand is their tiny little window on the game, then it's very difficult for them to be a generalist when you need one because they don't understand what's going on more broadly. Everyone ideally can do more than just one thing, but ideally also everyone has a broad idea of where the project is going so they can pick up a shovel when a hole needs to, when a hole needs to be dug. Speaking of plans, you had a plan, right? Plan don't need to be some big brain boy complicated junk. A plan needs to be easy. Tells the lads your plan. Then when things change, change your plan. Then tell them the new plan. Sometimes you need to tell the gits a bunch of time before they remember the plan. So keep the plan easy to remember, because you'll be saying it a bunch. Not a ton to clarify here. This works just as well for humans as it does for orcs. Have a plan, make it simple enough that you can constantly reiterate that plan, and don't keep that plan a secret. It takes seven times for people to remember things a lot of the time, so have a plan you can say seven times. Have a plan that your sub leads can reiterate or refine. Have a plan that you could have printed on a t-shirt if you can at all pull that off because people need to know where you're going. And if they understand the goal, if they understand the point, because it's nice and clear and crisp, then the steps along the way aren't quite as important. But you might need those steps. And those steps maybe in some circumstances are important. If they are, communicate them to your team and if at all possible, explain why they're important. Why is very important for a lot of people for buy-in? Because it allows them to understand and it makes things feel way less arbitrary. Have a plan, keep it simple. 
keep saying it out loud until everyone's aligned. Member tells them to plan. Once they know the plan, let them be about it. You got better thing to do than squeaks in a bunch of boys. If you was all worried about how they doing this is smashing, then how you be smashing the stuff you needs to be smashing. Orcs knows how to smash. Leave them to it. This one can be a hard one for a lot of leaders. You need to trust your people. You need to tell them the plan. You need to tell them the goal. And then you need to let them do it. If you are babysitting them the entire time, they're not doing their job. And you're not doing your job anymore either. You're doing their job. And so now you have two people doing one person's job. The more senior job isn't getting done anymore. And the more junior job is being done by the more senior person. Tell people what you need them to do and then let them do it. Trust them to do that. You can verify their work. You can give them feedback, but trust that they can do the job you hired them to do. Otherwise, you're just an individual contributor with this friction of a weird management structure. Your job is to lead, so lead. Let the work be done by the people that are being paid to do that work. You is the boss. Everyone knows you is the boss because you thought about it, right? So don't be a git about it. The mech boy fixes the truck. The weird boy does the jump. Let the orcs do what the orcs do. If you're telling the mech boy how to fix the def copter, why ain't you a mech boy? Get back to the boss stuff you get. Again, don't micromanage. Let the people who are specialized in the areas that they're specialized in be the specialists. Let your graphics programmer do the graphics programming. Let the artist do the art. You are in a leadership position now. You are not an individual contributor anymore. So stop acting like one. Trust your people to bring their own specializations to the job and let them be about the work that you need them to do. Otherwise, you are not suited for the leadership position. If you cannot allow your team to do the things that they are trained to do, then you are an individual contributor. You're an individual contributor who's been given an unfortunate amount of power. So let people do the jobs you're paying them to do. Sometimes the plan gonna fail. Sometimes we cannot get the boys to listen right. But there be one big guy still on the other side. Take a chopper, take a shooter and go deal with him. The lads will understand that plan. Sometimes you just need to show the boys what to crump. Sometimes your plan isn't going to work. Sometimes you are going to lay it out to the team and they're going to buy in. And then when you start trying to execute, it's just not going to work. They're going to get stuck. In that case, a fairly effective strategy can be to just aim the entire team at the most obvious large obstacle in the way and do everything in the, your power to overcome that one obstacle. Because if that obstacle is the largest obstacle, then that one's gone. And sometimes that's all it takes to just get the team unstuck and moving again on your plan. Or plans don't need to be all sneaky sneaky. Sometimes the best thing to do is to smash the biggest thing. Then they don't have that thing in no more. Then you smash the next biggest thing. Pretty soon they got no things. Any or can get that plan. I'm a big proponent of keeping your plan as simple as possible aiming as much of the team as possible at a single goal. The more you can focus the team down, the more that you are able to move very quickly and overcome a lot of obstacles. This is Pile of Sand. This is the Hourglass that I've talked about before, which is about keeping the team's focus as narrow as possible, allowing that focus to force the other questions to be answered around the outside. It's also much easier to communicate because your goal is this one very specific thing and other sub goals will naturally arise out of that single central goal. We ain't some Umi that don't even know how the slugger works. We knows. We born knowing. If it don't work, probably ain't built tough enough. Adds more metal. Still ain't working? Hits it with the grot. Maybe that fixes it. Maybe the grot fixes it. At least it feels better. If it still don't work, use it as a clever. If it does work, maybe add some more DACA. You can always use more DACA. A lot of times we can get caught up in our own cleverness, trying to find overly complicated, overly refined solutions to problems. And sometimes all we need is the brute force solution. Indeed, when we are trying to find these perfect solutions, we can actually end up with something so complicated, so intricate, that it essentially doesn't work, 
And we have to pull out all that complexity at the end and go back to something much more simple. Whereas if we had just stuck with the simple solution, then we would have been fine. I've talked about this before, but if you are making a character in your game who is called the Phoenix, probably his superpower should be based upon fire. Talking yourselves into doing something more cumbersome, more complicated, cavitating probabilities, for example, is an unnecessary complication that players won't understand and you are going to end up having to put in a bunch of extra work to try to make that function when if you had just stuck with fire you would have saved yourself a ton of trouble a ton of complexity a ton of confusion just by going with the easier solution most of the time all you need is just the first most obvious solution that comes to mind we can talk ourselves into avoiding the cliche, avoiding the well-worn shortcut because we don't want to be obvious. But a lot of times all we have time for is obvious. All the player is looking for is obvious. And our complexity, our uniqueness comes from the interaction of all of these clearly executed features and clearly executed plot points. Don't talk yourself into being overly clever when all you really need is to just brute force your way through your obstacle. And while I wouldn't recommend that you hit your problems with members of your team, sometimes making one of your obstacles the full-time job of one of your more junior people can be a great use of resources. It can give them an opportunity to show what they're capable of, and it potentially takes it off your plate, or at least takes a lot of it off your plate. So don't overlook the opportunity to potentially delegate away some of the things that are taking up too much of your attention. Sometimes you ain't going to be there to lead the boys from the front. Sometimes you're not going to be in the scrap. The lads need to know what you're trying to do. Then they can make changes to the plans if they need to. If you don't, then all they can do is what you tell them. The most important part of your plan is a communication of the final goal. Because even if everything else has come apart, even if you've lost the ability to control your team, if they all know what they're trying to do and why, then they're going to make forward progress. Even if you're missing, even if you can't provide that guidance, them understanding the goal is going to allow them to move on their own. This is again about not telling people how to build a ship, but making them yearn for the sea. Because that yearning, that understanding of where you're trying to go and why is going to do so much more than the most intricately laid out plan in 95% of all cases. Remember, we as orcs, and orcs going to be fighting. You best find something worth fighting. Else your lads be fighting themselves. And that can be a good scrap and all, but better to find some beakies to crump instead of your orcs instead of your boys. Most of the people on your team are going to be doing something regardless of what's going on. So if you don't have them aimed at something, they're going to be finding work for themselves. And sometimes that can be an interesting exercise, but a lot of times that work is going to cause you trouble down the road. They're going to be creating features that are antithetical to the goals of your game, or they're going to be doing content that is going to cause a ton of bugs that you're going to have to deal with down the road. So have them moving towards something. Have them understand what the goal is. Have them understand the big obstacles in the way, because you never know, maybe they can help you get over those obstacles. Remember, we the orcs, we know how to fight the war. It's not so complicated. Trust your team, let them do the work you hired them to do. Communicate your plan and most importantly, the overarching goal of what you're trying to do. Aim the team at the biggest problem at any moment and you'll find that a plan will arise naturally. And ultimately, you've got this. Keep going and keep trying and you will find your way through the darkness. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. We have merchandise. This is the High Tea on the High Seas hoodie. This will be tagged in the video as well if you're interested in picking that up. This is a bit of an experiment for me. If you enjoyed this, definitely leave a comment below so that I know that this was helpful to you. 
if you're interested in me exploring this kind of idea for other things, throw that down in the comments as well. We'll see what I can do. Took a lot longer than I expected. Did you get something from this? Are you gonna take away some orc style management strategies? Let me know what your takeaway is down in the comments as well. I will see you again soon. Thank you.